Hey, recording live. The newest episode of Mindset Moves Podcast. Exclusively for you, the members of The Minimalist Method for Prosperous Female Entrepreneurs. I love helping other people to not have to go through some of the tests and trials that I did if possible. This is where you get the first dibs of the best business strategies ever so you can grow your revenue while minimalizing your time, your efforts, and your energy. There's great coaches. There's people in this field. So yeah, you want them on your team. Hello, and welcome to the newest episode of Mindset Moves, recorded for you exclusively real, raw, and live in my Facebook community, The Minimalist Method for Prosperous Female, oh, Prosperous Entrepreneurs. And I am here with my uh, friend, Melissa Hetrick, and we're going to tell you um, why, if you're somebody who's listening and you're feeling more fatigued and maybe you're not quite loving the way you look in the mirror in terms of, you're not, you, you don't feel like you're glowing, right? Or you're just not feeling like you're the best version of yourself and there's different things that are popping up in your life that you're like, "Hmm, that's kind of strange. Um, We're going to give you the two main reasons why you might be feeling those symptoms of of being unhealthy and some quick and easy shifts that you can take to feel like you're the, the better version of yourself. This show is formulated for you business leaders who are looking to expand and grow in all areas of your life, not just your business, but your personal life. And I would say that the number one thing that you could focus on to uh, get to the highest version of yourself is to feel good in your, in your, in your body and fuel it and, and nourish it so that you, you don't feel unhealthy. But before we go on to all that, I do want Melissa to introduce yourself here. Tell us who you are. What's your story? And why should we listen to you? (laughs) <laughs> well, I hope I have a good reason for you to listen, but like I think you do. Said, my name is Melissa Hetrick. I am a clinical pharmacist at um, a local hospital out in East Coast, Pennsylvania called the Lehigh Valley Hospital. I have worked there since I graduated college, so 21 years now. And I always wanted to become a pharmacist because I just loved helping people. You know, it was one of those pushes. My mom was like, you need to do something bigger, you know, go be a pharmacist. And every day, still now, I see patients coming in with all of these sicknesses, like cancer, diabetes, obesity, all these things. And I just have always wanted to create a bigger impact in the world of healthcare. You know, there were times in the past I sat in my job and I was just bored, I was uninspired and I'm like, I need something more. Having my own health struggles actually coupled with that. And I was introduced to something, the program I'm working with from my sister, and it really became this easy button. And it started as a hobby. I started as just a customer of the product and the company. And I just grew to see my health grow and myself blossom and realized now in my forties, I have found a community of people who take me as I am, love me for who I am and help me to grow and expand every single day. They push me every single day, every single day. And it's just, it's become a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And I just, one of the biggest things we can do for ourselves is eat whole foods. And that is the basis of the programs that we build and the programs that we work with. And like we mentioned at the beginning, it is one of the biggest reasons why we feel fatigued and why we don't feel well and look well. What we're putting inside of our bodies is what's coming out of our bodies. And I want to just help people continue to grow in that, in that way and provide you with life hacks and tips and simple changes to get the best version of yourself. And I hope that I can continue to do that and, and meet new and more people that feel the same way that I do about health and wellness. 
Awesome. And I do have a question a little bit, digging a little bit more into your story. As a pharmacist, I feel like that is such a different world than what we're talking about here, which is uh, help through nutrition. And, and by the way, those of you who know me and watch the show and, uh, number one, you know, that I'm a mom of six. So anytime that you hear a child, a dog, or any rumblings, I just encourage you to take a drink of whatever drink that you have and make a game out of it. I've got my water right here. Let's see how hydrated we can all get during this episode. Every time. Number two, you are going to, if you've watched the show, you know, that I'm like, gangbusters, if that even is the right word, I'm all about holistic health, nutrition as a, you know, as, as a way of a medicine and fueling your body, energizing your body, rather than just satiating some sort of craving or hunger and how that can fend off diseases like uh, cancer and diabetes and, you know, other things as well. Um, and so I am so curious, Melissa, what led you from pharmacist to, um, you know, to, to this path here, like that's such a, I feel like that's such a, you know, wide path. And I'd love to hear more about your story. I, you know, and I think it's just my, my health story and I, I will, I'll tell the whole story. Um, I learned about this and the power of nutrition while my husband and I were struggling with infertility. Mm. So I went through years of IVF years of injections, um, special diets, uh, acupuncture, special herbs, all kinds of things. And not once. So I say nutrition, but that literally was the end of my three to five year course where I went to a new doctor because my first doctor got rid of me because the medicine wasn't working and she refused to try to help us again. And I met a doctor who is very acclaimed in New Jersey. And he was like, you're going to modify your diet in this way, this way, this way, this way. You can continue to take the supplements you're taking. And he just really believed in the power of nutrition and in our diets and in our lives and how much it affects us. And I believe that's how medicine started, you know, the power of food, the power of herbs. And I just struggle to see my patients start on, or, you know, our friends and family start on one medication, you get a side effect that gets you a new medication. And then you get a side effect and then you get a drug interaction. And before you know it, you're on 15 medications and it just, it just snowballs. And then you can't at some point figure out what to get off of. And guess what? You still don't feel better. And I think it was just that, that realization that something, our bodies, a lot of our illness can be alleviated, I'm not saying cured because there are conditions we absolutely need medications, absolutely need modern medicine. Um, but there are things that can really help us feel better and take away some of the medications that do more harm than good. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And just having that experience with my mom and um, her journey with cancer and everything that I learned uh, along those lines and things that I can do to not feed those cancer cells, not, um, not feed into that. And then, you know, my dad, who's a diabetic with Alzheimer's who, uh, it's, it is kind of just maddening. It's, it's kind of like your blood sugar is high. Let's up that insulin level. Whereas I've actually tested it and, um, between taking him for a long walk and giving him his dosage of insulin that he's supposed to get four times a day, same effect on the blood sugar. I can literally take him for a long walk around the lake and feed him um, more protein, more vegetables, uh, rather than feeding him, you know, probably what he wants, which I know is what he wants, like toast and potatoes and, and, and pasta and letting him just sit there. S same, same effect. Yeah. Right. So I completely agree with you on that. So what are the two main reasons that we're unhealthy then is it, we're talking about, you know, it's what we eat, right? Right. So we have poor food quality. 50% of what we eat as Americans is processed. You know, we hear all these things all the time, uh, GMO preservatives, antibiotics, uh, our food travels from across the country. So yes, it's summer. Have I been to a farm for my food, my produce? No, not all of it. No. 
you know, so by the time, you know, maybe let's say my broccoli is getting to me, it's lost 50% of its nutritional value. Mm -hmm. That means we need more servings. And the other part that we know well, and probably don't always think about is environmental toxins increasing just day after day after day, just what's in our air, what's in our water, you know, what are we putting are you throwing your prescriptions away down the drain? Are you throwing them in the garbage and cars, gas, you know, our carbon footprint is very large. And those are two of the major reasons that impact why we are so unhealthy. Yeah. So we've got to do everything that we can to detoxify and to limit those toxins, which is, you know, with your company, one of the products that I've like bought into hook, line and sinker, sinker, what, you know, you guys know what I'm saying, um, is the, uh, it's, you know, the garden that I get to have. I had these big ambitions this spring, last spring and this spring, something always comes up at that time. Like I want to get this big garden. Right. But that's kind of going from point A to point Z. And so you, your company offers some, something that's like, okay, if you aren't able to do that big garden right now, here's something that's pretty much portable, versatile. It's, you can do it indoors if you live in the East coast and like it's raining and snowing six months out of the year. Um, or you could put it outside. So I right now have it on my back deck and it has significantly increased the amount of greens that I eat. I didn't know what the heck I was planning, by the way, I don't have a green thumb. I don't know what I'm doing. I just, it just basically came with all these seeds. The kids and I had like a good old time, just putting whatever seeds we were given. I never labeled mine either, or I label them. And then I throw the paper out and I'm like, I don't know what's growing. Yeah. And then I have no idea. Somebody will be like, what are you eating? I'm like, I don't know. It's green. I put it in my sandwich. So I'm actually able to put like microgreens and, and leaf, you know, those leafy greens in my, in my sandwiches or, uh, in my dishes, just adding that, that greenery where, where it would just otherwise be missing because, you know, like you said, you're going to the store and you're also buying this big thing of lettuce that by the time you get through it in a couple of days, it's like, it's not, not good anymore. It's not fresh. And, and exactly as you said, it's already lost a lot of its nutrition, not to mention it's often packaged in plastic. So it's, you know, it's kind of like, this is, this is a good solution. If you can't, you know, if your schedule doesn't permit going to do the C, is it called the CSA, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Going to the local farm or, you know, you keep meaning to get around to it. This is something that's, you know, took me in an hour to set up and I now have a garden in my back deck. And you're walking from your back deck to your kitchen. Only your hands are touching it. Yeah. We just reduced our carbon footprint. We just reduced any pesticides or herbicides on it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, and kids love it. And my husband, you know, we have a great time. It does take a learning curve sometimes. And I had a couple bugs this week. I had to, uh, you know, (laughs) get rid of, but that happens in a regular dirt garden. In any garden. Yes. Actually, it's even worse. The problem because actually ours is, I think in your case as well, it's safe in our deck. That's kind of fenced in. So we're not, we don't have the deer and and all of the other animals out there picking at it that, you know, we're losing battles against because it's, you know, it's safe and enclosed. And like, like, like you said, our kids love it. My kids love it. That love it. The baby actually loves it. He tries to like splash his little hand in it and you <laughs> watch and you're like, nope. Oh <laughs> so we love it. We love it. Um, okay. So yeah, that's, you know, the main reason is what's in the air and in, in our food. Would you have anything to say about that as well? Well, I mean, some of the things that I do to combat some of that, we already talked about eating whole foods, real foods. Um, safer products. There's lots of ways we can find safer products. Um, you know, you can go to the store and find them. There's websites and groups that will lead you even past those products that say they're safe in the store. Cause sometimes they're not, which is not what our discussion is about. Um, mm-hmm. mindfulness. Mm-hmm. I literally have an alarm on my phone every day that says yoga or yoga or meditation. This is not uh, questionable or not, non-negotiable, non-negotiable. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, Dang, okay. And I can tell the difference. Um, water. We both just had our water. I threw a lemon in mine today because I used it for my dinner. I needed fresh lemon juice. So I threw it in my water sleep. Mm-hmm. We so often are just like, eh, I'll get a couple hours. Mm-hmm. We really need seven, eight hours. 
Mm -hmm. um, even though I am not a Fitbit person or one of those, you know, devices, a lot of us can measure our sleep and can see what we're getting. And is it REM sleep? Is it deep sleep? You know, and it's really makes a difference. Well, even from a productivity standpoint, the first thing you can do to help yourself for productivity and for success is prioritize your sleep, schedule that into your schedule first. Mm -hmm. And then like you just said, the mindfulness, I don't even look at my phone until we're about, I'm, I'm about an hour into being awake. And that awake time happens before my kids are even awake. So I can be grounded prioritize the meditation, the journaling, the prayer, the devotional reading before I even look at my screen. And by the way, when I'm looking at my screen, it's just to set some timers for some other daily practices. And that's, and I, I you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean that by you doing that and setting that time aside Huge sleep, difference. and mindfulness, your mm -hmm. family's benefiting, you're benefiting, you know, and it's that it comes back to that taking care of yourself first. And it's not selfish. It's, it's something we need to do. And yeah. the other thing is exercise. Every little bit counts. That's like my favorite tagline, whether it's money, whether it's like, you know, moving everything, every little bit counts. This morning I walked up and down my block. It was probably like a five to seven minute walk, but it's all I had time for before I started work. And I just wanted to be outside. Right. Um, and, you know, one other thing you said, scheduling your sleep. Do I want to stay up late and have a glass of wine and watch TV? Sure. Am I going to feel, I feel so much morning? worse the next day? So, so much worse, worse the next so day. Much worse. Yeah. And, you know, you just, you, you, you still get that kid thing. Like, am I going to miss something if I go to bed at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock? No. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> we have Netflix. We are not going to miss anything. Right. And so that fear of missing out doesn't exist. You're not going to miss out because every <laughs> opportunity that's meant for you is, is right. there for you. Right. Although and I do I, have a ticket to an event I love coming up at the end of the month that's happening after my bedtime. We'll see how I do. Okay. Okay. I love <laughs> it. I love it. So I think I answered your question, but those are, oh, some, okay. of, awesome. those are some of the things I do to kind of keep myself on track. And everybody ebbs and flows. Like, let's be clear. I'm hundred percent nowhere near perfect, not striving to be, don't want to be, but you have to have some sort of basis right. that you're yes. working towards. Right. And, you know, when we talk about the, the wine too, I, I love wine, right. I'm Italian, half, half Italian, half French. Those are the people who love the wine. Right. But there is something to be said about when I am not doing that, like at night glass of wine and the energy that I feel and the, um, my mood also, because alcohol is a depressant, whether it's a glass of wine. So I'll have, a, you know, I'm now trying to, uh, just have it whenever I'm out with friends or when my dad comes over on his, you know, his Mondays, uh, that he comes over for dinner, he's got to have his wine, even though he's diabetic, you know, we, okay. you know, I give him his wine and then I get to enjoy it with them too. Um, so, Whenever we're looking ahead to 2023 and the opportunities that you have and what you have to offer, what would you love to happen in your business? I think it's, I am just looking for more people to link arms with like-minded people. And, you know, I was thinking about this. Of course, I want my team to grow. I want my business to grow. I want my friends to grow and the people that I'm working with and helping, because if I can help five people next week, that's 25 people, maybe mm -hmm. five weeks after that. And it just keeps growing. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, oh, I want to help people that are like, I want to meet people that are like driven and like-minded and this and that, but it, I don't, I don't want to put a box around it. Mm -hmm. I want to meet people that find their health exhilarating and see the brilliance of the company and the things that I offer and the things that I'm teaching, the things that I'm sharing, learning, um, and just doesn't matter where you are in your health journey. Are you just starting? Are you like, shoot, I'm a mess, you know, or are you a triathlete who's been doing that since you were a teenager? It, it, this is for any stage of your life and your health journey. And I'm just I'm just excited. Like, I just love sharing with people and talking to people about it. And, you know, just like anything, it's not right for everybody, but Hey, maybe it's right for your brother, your sister, your, your best friend. And 
it's always great to learn new information and yeah. you know, never know what will come from it. So looking for open doors and meeting lots of new people and growth. Growth was my word for 2023. So I do also want to share that, and that's a great word, by the way, I do also want to share that one of the products that you recommend, um, my own midwife recommends, and it just has said that when you're pregnant, the difference between when she sees a placenta and an umbilical cord, that the difference between one that is taking supplements that you recommend and someone who is not is night and day. Like that umbilical cord is like between this and like this, that placenta is like really full of nutrients and, and placenta, you know, for, for those of you who don't know what the placenta does, it's like the one organ that processes the nutrients, uh, you know, to your baby. Right. Um, and it's the only, it's like, it's fascinating. It's the only organ that, you know, grows. And I and- like we probably talked about this, but I don't remember it, but I have a friend who this was her prenatal for all three of her children. Yeah. And that is 100% her story yeah. that her midwife was like, Whoa, your placenta is amazing. Yeah. And, um, I have another pharmacist that I work with in the company and one of her, while she was, you know, pregnant and going through her pregnancies, this was one of her main focuses in teaching the power you know, of the products and of real food and how healthy it is for our children. And our, our, our children are not healthy. Taking something like this in utero, giving them healthy choices when they're so, so little, it's all they know. Yeah. And before you know it, they're, you know, splashing their hands in the plants and stealing mm-hmm. some lettuce and mm-hmm. they don't know anything different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is, I I am so guilty of this. I am so guilty of this because there is such a normalized, incentivized love for white sugar products for our children, right? Like if you, if you do good, you'll get ice cream, right? Or, you know, I'll take you to the store to buy you candy. And I can, and I am so guilty of that. And actually just recently I've been retaking inventory of like, wait a minute, all we're eating is SHIT. What's going yeah. on here? We need to recalibrate, right? And 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 push up against that resistance of like right. mom, you know, um, because they certainly can with the teenagers, especially. It's like okay, it doesn't have to always be organic, and it's like you know what it does. It does always have to be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're making me. You just made me think. I saw a little boy last night at a festival, and his mom handed. And listen, I know nothing about them, but like his mom handed him you and know, no judgment either. Right. No judgment. Like you said, I do the same thing. We're at a festival, you know, a, yeah. a music festival. And she handed him some Smarties. And I was like, no, dang. Like, I wonder why he needs Smarties. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm eating a gyro. I'm treating myself. Right. With a gyro. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we'll eat cake and cookies and candy. Mm-hmm. And then we go on a low carb diet and we can't eat an apple. Right. Like high in carbs. And I'm like, oh. right. Exactly. But it also has like 10,000 phytonutrients that are, you know, doing multitudes more than a multivitamin. Like you kind of have to put things into perspective. Like there's so many things out there and there's so many fads and there's so many diets. And, you know, what I share is not, not a diet. It's a right. lifestyle. It's a lifestyle change. Like I hate worrying about what I'm eating. Right. I don't want to follow a diet. I don't want to follow guidelines. I just want to, like you, you said something like, I want to fill my body when, when I'm hungry, I want to nourish myself and it's a work in progress always. (laughs) Totally. And I think, um, I was at a talk last night because again, this stuff fascinates me. And one of our clients was having a nutritional clinic and he was, uh, talking about how, you know, the majority, I mean, basically any instance of like finding polyps within our intestines, it's, it's nutrition, it's nutrition based. It's basically, it's all nutrition based. And that, um, yes, like we all love our red meat, but in moderation, because it is proven that the amount of times it takes you to process red meat, are you ready for this? It's actually Mm -hmm. rotting in your body by the time you're done digesting it. So it's okay to have red meat every now and then. Right. But like, I think we've gotten so as a society of like, 
cheeseburgers and hamburgers and, you know, protein, pro- especially I'm telling you because I did some work for a very well-known food brand. And it was like, oh, the trend right now is protein. Let's amp it up in our marketing, protein, protein, protein. Let's put together right. these protein pack- packages. Meanwhile, it's like, it's still SHIT that you're putting in your right. body here. Right. right. Uh, so it's, it's very important to, to know that, that if you have a hard time infiltrating more of those vegetables and fruits into your diet, um, that are organic, there are solutions out there. Um, right. You could reach out to Melissa about to make it so much easier. Cause that's really like, that's, it's kind of like wash out any tendencies yes. of neg- negativity by filling it with easy ways to make it happen. And, you know, and I just read, I'm reading a book um, and it was about plant-based gut health mm-hmm. and it has no connection to my company. And it is like the story, the same story. And I'm really excited because I got to the end of the book and it has a four week diet plan. Mm-hmm. And I say diet, but I don't mean diet. Um, nutrition plan, nutrition plan. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this because I sometimes struggle with my gut. I, that's, that's the part of my body where I gain weight is in my waistline. So no one sees it, but me, cause it's mm-hmm. easy to hide. And I'm like, I'm going to do this. I want to do this. And I'm just having the best time with it. Just, um, trying new foods and, you know, trying new recipes and I don't actually, I forgot my point of this, but no, I think it's so have fun with it, right? Don't make it an assignment, make it yeah, easy and have fun with it, rediscover it, make it a journey. And I just, you know, as we're talking, like you don't have to navigate this all on your own. There's so much information out there and diet fads and noise from the internet, like come together with a community. Let's all do it together. You know, let's make easy lifestyle changes and everything in moderation and every little bit counts. And that's just what I try to stick with. Absolutely. And your gut is your second brain. So it's so important that you, you do the things that you can to just help you feel better by assisting it to do what it needs to do. So (laughs) this conversation has been amazing. It's literally my happy place. Where can they find you if they want to learn more about you and what you do? So, uh, we're live on Facebook now. So right here, live on, um, you're not going to find me live in my own Facebook every day <laughs> just under my name on Facebook. Also on Instagram, it's Melissa at healthy habits. And on both of those pages, I have a link tree, which has a link to, uh, websites. It has a link to a book that I contributed to with other pharmacists. And, um, I'd love to set up chats with anybody. If they would like more information, we could do a little discovery call and, um, you know, talk more. I do have a YouTube channel. It's very, I'm sure it's nothing like anything Marta puts out there and I should probably be embarrassed. I've seen it. No, it's phenomenal. Nope. It's great. Um, It's great. It's beautiful. But, um, just some quick, healthy videos, some presentations I've been on and some other things. So those are all the places. And I look forward to, meeting new people. And I thank you so much for allowing me to be in this space. This was a lot of fun. I enjoy talking to you every time. And you're such like a ball of energy and a bright light. And I really appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you in this conversation. I feel like I learned so many new things just hearing (laughs) you talk. You're so wise, just having that background as a pharmacist and partnering with the community that you've placed yourself in. I think like you're the go-to person if anybody has questions about how they can feel better. And I wanted to say, oh, oh, sorry. I just wanted to say what I think one of the reasons I love what I do and um, somebody was quoted in our company as saying this, it's like a self-development course, cleverly disguised as a business. Like I am constantly reading. I'm like self-development fiction, self-development fiction. (laughs) And it's just, it's a lot of fun. And it just, it's neat to continue to do that. We're always growing and why not learn something new? I'm a perpetual learner. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Me too. I've got, yes, I've got the set days for the fiction reading and the set times (laughs) for the self-development. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This has been an amazing conversation guys. So if you want to find Melissa, you just look for her name and then wherever you're watching this, just (laughs) take it, copy it, paste it into Facebook or Instagram and YouTube, and you will find her and you can reach out to her that way until next time. 
Thanks for listening and watching the Mindset Moves show made for you business leaders who are looking to shift your mindsets to expand, grow, and just be a better version of yourself. Bye.